Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chef Prashant Chembala uh, from the National Institute of Hospitality Management, Vasai. I'm sorry for the delay today uh, due to some technical issues uh, we were facing. But we are yet back with our, another session of uh, training and development of uh, our students at the uh, Institute. As NIHM has this vision of imparting quality training and knowledge to its students, we have associated with yet again JW Marriott, but this time JW Marriott Pune. And we have a guest chef who is Chef Vikas Vibhuti, executive pastry chef, cluster chef for the JW Marriott Pune. He's also the on the advisory panel for the Southeast Asia region. So congratulations on that, Chef uh, Vibhuti. Uh, uh, I welcome you along with my faculties and students. I welcome you on board here uh, for this training session. Thank you very much uh, for taking your time out. Uh, all over to you, Chef Vibhuti. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Indeed, I'm quite thankful to you, Chef Prashant, and your entire team for giving me this opportunity so that I can share my bit of experience and my skill uh, to impart some amount of knowledge within this stipulated time uh, of uh, one hour. So, uh, first of all, I hope everybody is skipping well and you all are safe. Uh, thank you for your time so that uh, we can uh, associate together and uh, we can do something which is quite interesting and some technical skill which I would like to share with uh, all the students and rest of the fraternity. So, what uh, we are going to do is we will uh, do a nice uh, French macaroon session. Uh, macaroon is something which is very intricate something which is very de delicate it uh, the origination of uh, macaron is uh, slightly debated although it's quite clear that it started uh, from uh, venice in italy and then slowly and gradually it gained popularity in france so it is actually originated in uh, italy however the popularity of the uh, macaron uh, over a period of time because of their innovation because of their creativity uh, it becomes so popular that it is also uh, no, uh, it is quite uh, known that this belongs to France. What we'll do is we'll do a recipe which is uh, macaron and we'll do strawberry and white chocolate macaron today. I'll just take you through. That's great, uh, Chef. Uh, I think I will, uh, you know, Chef, uh, for this uh, presentation, uh, it could not have been done live uh, due to again technical issues so chef has taken time and recorded the session uh, for us yesterday uh, which we i will be sharing it over the screen So let me take you through the basic ingredients, basic equipments and the method of making a macro. I'll show you one by one. We have got 250 grams of caster sugar, 60 ml of water, 14 ml of the color which you desire. We have got grams of egg white into two which is 95 grams for the meringue, 95 grams for making the paste. We have got TPT, a mix of almond powder and icing sugar, which is 1 is to 1, that is 250 grams of almond powder and 250 grams of icing sugar. In terms of the equipment, we need a kitchen aid or a planetary mixer. In case if you don't have a we will be requiring a kitchen aid or maybe a planetary mixer. Or in case if you don't have a planetary mixer, we can use the hand beater, high speed one. We need an induction or gas range. It's a clean saucepan. About small equipment, we need a piping bag, we need a nozzle which should be half centimeter in diameter, we need a plastic scraper, we need a probe, thermometer, scissor, spatula, knife, a decent size mixing bowl to mix all the ingredients together. We need a silpat. Here we have a 
dedicated sill pad for macaroon so that your size of macaroon are even. Uh, in case if you don't have this, we can use parchment sheet or we may use the regular sill pad and a tray, heavy tray. So now let's begin the first part of making a macaroon. For this, we need water, which is 60 ml, pre measured. We need 250 grams of caster sugar. We need the color and the temperature probe or thermometer. We'll caster sugar in the pan, ensuring we don't miss out on any grammage of caster sugar which is sticking to the spatula. Add the water and then we'll heat it up till heat it up till 115 to 118 degrees Celsius. Your sugar is getting cooked. What I'll do, I'll put the egg white in the planetary mixer. I will just check how much temperature the sugar has reached. It's 103, 104 currently. We still need to go ahead till 115. The moment it reaches 115, we'll start the beating of the egg white. And at 118, we'll start pouring it very slowly into the uh, egg white so that it beats properly without any splatter. Now we have almost attained the temperature, so we'll quickly start the. so that the mix is evenly whipped without splattering the hot syrup. And once we pour the entire syrup, we will gradually increase the speed of the kitchen Ensure that you pour entire syrup so that your recipe is not distorted. Very, very, very important. We have poured now very quickly. So now we'll make the base of the macaron, which is the paste, which is made out of your TPT, that is equal amount of almond flour, icing sugar, and then we'll add egg white to it. And we'll ensure that we make a smooth paste, even paste without any lumps and ensuring that it is not over mixed as well. I prefer paper. We'll just keep rotating the bowl as well and we'll keep mixing the. So now the mix is almost mix is almost ready. You will see there is no lumps. It's evenly mixed and it's like now once the meringue reaches at around 45 degrees Celsius, we'll stop the equipment and then we'll start folding in the meringue in three parts. Let's show you that. Till the temperature to go down till 45 degrees for the meringue. Now the meringue is almost going to get ready so I'll add the color as per the recipe and we'll beat it further. Slowly we will increase the speed. We can use gel color, we can also use uh, powdered color or liquid color. Here we have uh, liquid color. The thing is, now the meringue is almost ready. We will just switch it off. We will remove. Just 
at the peak. It's a stiff peak, so this is ready to go. Now I'll mix the meringue into the macaron paste base recipe in three parts so that we get a smooth and a even mixed macaron for piping. I'll remove entire meringue so that it's very 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 important and crucial to use entire ingredient as per the recipe because even a little bit of here and there your consistency of macaron will go for a toss and that's what we don't want so we have to be very particular about the entire thing. We'll take a little more to begin with and then again I'll use the broad scraper to mix. And I'll mix the entire thing. The first lot of meringue we add so that whatever aeration has been achieved, even if it goes flat, we have the rest two batches which will retain the aeration and it will give an even mixing. So ensure that there is no lumps and once your mix is going to get almost ready, it will be shiny without any streak of either almond paste or the color. You can see now. And while we are mixing, we have to ensure that we do not over mix also. So that's why I prefer using a broader scraper so that the number of stroke is limited and we do not over mix the batter. I will go with the second lot of meringue and I will save some for the end so that the final mix is very smooth and consistent. Again we will do the cut and fold method while we are doing this and we have to keep rotating the bowl also so that we evenly mix without leaving any thing at the base or on the corner. And while mixing we will drop it like this. So we cut, fold and we drop. Cut, fold and we drop. So the second batch is almost mixed. I will go ahead with the final lot of meringue addition. And once this is mixed properly, we are good to go for the piping. And then baking. This is a very 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 crucial step. In fact, in the making of macaron, every single small or any step, all steps are very crucial and important because it decides the final texture the height of your macaron, the body of your macaron, the shell and the overall finesse. So we have to be working like an artist and like a scientist so that we do not miss any part and we get a fantastic result every time. Although macaron is a delicacy which is very delicate yet it's one of the most challenging thing to perfect it and to get a consistent result you have to be really very 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 careful and very disciplined I would say. Now you can see we are having a bit of gloss and the meringue and almond paste mix is almost evenly spread. How you check is you just let it flow and it should go like this. The filigree work how we check should follow properly. So now our mix is ready, we will pipe it after filling it in the piping bag. Now we will fill the macaron mix into the piping bag. One of the trick is to lock your piping bag. In case if you were a piping bag holder, that's well and good. Otherwise how you do is you just insert the piping bag inside your nozzle and lock it. 
So while you are filling your piping bag with the macaroon mix, it won't flow out of your nozzle and you will not dirty your area and you won't lose out on the mixture or the batter. So this is ready. I will hold the piping bag with my hand and I will scrape it from the other side like this so that I get it. While piping you have to keep in mind that you do not overfill your piping bag because the batter is quite thick. You will not have ease of piping and you may end up you know spoiling the batter. Now you pull your piping bag slowly and pressurize it so that and block your piping bag from behind and we are good to go. Cut the extra tip. Always hold your piping bag at 90 degree and then pipe the macaroon. Pipe evenly and same amount of mixture has to go every time. This is a bit tricky but you will get it with experience and with practice. So practicing is very important otherwise your macaroons will not be of the same size and both the shells needs to be same so you have to be accurate in terms of piping in terms of your size and the volume of your macaron so we are almost done with the second process which is piping so we have piped all the macarons i have left this because the silpet was slightly bent now Another important thing is to tap your macaroon. Then you tap your macaroon so that they are even and it settles down. All the peaks will submerge into the hemisphere and then that's it. Now this will go for baking, you can just see. So now we'll bake the macaroons at 160 degrees Celsius. Here we go. pretty good you can see good lip of the macaroon very smooth finish of the top and it's a very good macaroon which has come out so it's a baker's delight when you see any of the baked product coming out in proper desired shape and size so here you go you just have a close look keep it to cool once this is Baked. So now your macarons are baked. Now you need to let it cool for at least half an hour so that the shell are slightly firm. They are at room temperature cold. And then what we will do is, in case if we want to use it, we can use it uh, once it is cooled immediately as well. Otherwise, you can refrigerate it and then you can uh, use it later as well. So we have baked the macaron shells and they have come out really well. Now the next step is the filling. For the filling what we are going to do is a strawberry and white chocolate dinner. Uh, for that I will show you how to make it. I will show you the ingredient first which is 150 grams. We have got Kuvarcha white chocolate which is 150 grams and we have 40 grams of liquid glucose which is already put in the pan. It's always advisable to uh, use the liquid glu glucose directly into the pan so that you do not have wasted and you uh, mess around less with this particular pan. So what we will do, we will switch on and we will first put the strawberry puree along with the liquid glucose take out all the puree with the help of rubber spatula which is one of the most important equipment which saves lots and lots of ingredient and balances the recipe well. We will just gently mix it so that the puree and liquid will 
closer is evenly combined. Whenever we are heating or cooking any of the fruit puree, it should not be cooked above 55 or maximum up to 60 degrees because what happens if we go more than 55 or 60, the intricate and delicate flavor of your fruit you will lose at the same time the consistency all will be different. We will just heat it enough so that we can melt the chocolate and we can make a nice emulsion of the puree and the chocolate. So now it is almost heated and the liquid glucose has dissolved properly and the cream is hot enough. I will pour it into on top of the white chocolate. Also in case if your puree is hot or even if your cream is very hot, what will happen? It will denature your chocolate and you will not get a very smooth and well finished ganache. So the temperature has to be in control. We will let it steam for some time. With the heat of your puree, the chocolate will melt and then we will emulsify it by gently mixing. Now the chocolate is almost melted so we will just gently mix. With the heat of your puree, the chocolate is almost combined. Just gently stir the mix to emulsify it. Whenever we are making any particular ganache, we have to ensure that sweetness should never ever overpower the flavor of your fruit or the key flavor of your mixture. So you have to balance it out in a way that flavor has to be the prominent one and sweet has just to support the way salt supports any dish. Same it has the same is the role of your sugar in our desserts. This is completely evenly mixed. We'll let it cool and then we'll temper it before we pipe it inside the macaron as a filling. So what we'll do? We'll use ice bath. We have ice, some amount of water, and then same on the bowl. We'll transfer the content into this. Stainless steel bowls are very user friendly and they are good conductor of heat for confectionery items like this one. We will just rotate the bowl to temper the ganache which we have done, ensuring that we scrape from all the sides including the base and we will mix it in the Important process in case if you do not temper your ganache, your ganache may start flowing after you have piped onto your macaroon. So this is one of the most important and crucial part. Ensure that you never skip this, otherwise, you'll have challenge with your macaroon and they will flow. So, our macaroon shells are ready. Now, we see the top finish and the inside, the base, both are perfect. We pair the macaroon. So that similar same size macaroon we pair together so they will become one macaroon. So two shells will make one macaroon and then what we do, we keep one macaroon in verse while piping so that uh, like this. That's the ideal way of piping a macaron so that you don't mix and match the shells and you save on time as well. I'll show you how to pipe. The ganache is already tempered which we have made and now it is of proper consistency. How we do this? We'll just pipe one round dollar like this on every macaron. This is the key flavor element which will distinguish your macaron in terms of taste and flavor. So you can do endless combination whatever you like. You can have multiple trials of 
the flavor. What we have done is white chocolate and strawberry. This is it. This is how your dinner should look like. Now, sealing your macaron is another important and very uh, technical thing. You have to hold your macaron like this and then press it in the center, keep it and gently press it. So you need to have this lip formation which is over here and then you keep your macaron inside. Again we will do the same thing. We'll, macaron should have good amount of ganache otherwise you will not have a good flavor and once you have piped this, this needs to go in the chiller or refrigerator for at least a day and then you should remove it and keep it outside for an hour and then you should have it to enjoy it. The ideal texture of macaroon should be chewy from inside and it should have a slight crust from the outer. So now here is our uh, strawberry and white chocolate macaroon which is almost ready. We'll, we can try it now also or else after storing it for almost 24 hours is what is recommended. That looks, uh, that was really amazing, uh, Chef Vikas. Hello? Chef Vikas, are you there? Chef, he needs to unmute himself. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I hope you all enjoyed uh, the macaroon making. Uh, which in fact I enjoy every time I do because it is something which is really really delicate and which is something which actually is tough in a way because you never know till the time your product comes out of the oven you you are not very sure you know because of maybe temperature because of humidity because of even two extra stroke of mixing or maybe two under stroke of mixing can change the entire product in case if you don't have uh, even heating in your oven or maybe in case if you have holded it for even five minutes extra there are n number of ways in which you will not get a macaroon right so you have to be very particular of time temperature and all the elements which are involved in the making of macaroon apart from the recipe and the recipe which i have shared in case if you follow it to the t uh, mostly we get the results without failure until unless there is a technical challenge with the oven or maybe with the evenness of heating or uh, maybe there is more of humidity and all otherwise this recipe is quite uh, tried and tested and I personally uh, vouch for this recipe and you can see the end result uh, which we have just uh, showcased uh, another important thing which I'd like to highlight about macaron is uh, the way you can you know uh, play with the flavors play with the combination uh, with innovativeness whatever in case if you need any flavoring you can do that in case if you need to have extra crunch or maybe a jelly kind of thing in the center once your shells are done that is the key of the macaron which holds your filling uh, then next part is how you make it interesting how you make it very uh, you know unique uh, there is no limit it is only your imagination which can uh, make the macaron go you know, uh, while and you know, you will enjoy it the way uh, you want it to be. But while you are making a macaron, my simple principle and guideline, which I have personally followed and which I always uh, tell my team and to everyone, is please follow the recipe to the T, and you have to uh, ensure that we follow every single element what is required to be uh, done over here and another thing is please take care of the shells once in case if you are making macaron 
there are multiple uh, shells which you will get out of it so in case if you need smaller batches you can always freeze the shells in your deep freezer in an airtight container and another way is in case if you have ganache also and if you have the shells available do not waste it do not throw it or do, do not you know utilize it in a way proper finish off all the shells pipe it up the way you want it and then secure it in an airtight container and put it inside the deep freezer it will stay for almost one month and before using just what you have to do is put it in the walk-in for one hour and before you serve it from the chiller it should at least be kept outside at room temperature for maybe around half an hour to 40 minutes so that the temperature uh, is at room uh, uh, increases and then you enjoy the macaron uh, best at room temperature uh, and uh, the texture the way i told you it has to be chewy from inside and the outer has to have a thin crust and that's how you enjoy the macaron wow chef because that was really uh, nice and uh, you know the macaron was looking so delicious uh, uh, as i say you made it look so easy uh, making the perfect uh, macaron it's not everybody's cup of tea uh, not everyone can make you know the perfect macarons and you know the taste the crunchiness the you know, texture the creaminess uh, everything but i i sure we believe you know looking at it and the methods used uh, uh, it's perfect and it's i'm sure it's uh, delicious uh, i completely agree with you chef prashant what i would like to add is you know it needs good amount of discipline good amount of practice and one of the most important thing or the key thing for uh, a successful macaron is every time we begin we keep the end in mind so how we have to begin making macaron is first of all your oven temperature has to be set we cannot be running around in any process and there should not be any break in the process yeah. so while we are starting to make the macaron ensure that your area is completely set you have all equipment whatever is required right from small to big equipment you have all the ingredients weighed properly they are aligned as per the order that will be uh, going inside the you know the planetary mixer and then another important part is your equipment small just like piping bag nozzle your tray your silk pad everything has to be lined properly so that we don't break the order and we don't miss on the timing because macaron is something which is aerated thing in case sure. even if we for 4 minutes or 5 minutes eventually what happens the macaron will lose the aeration part and you will not you won't realize and you you'll eventually end up in a uh, low low quality of macaron and you'll definitely not be not satisfied what i personally do is uh, uh i will sieve the macaron uh, flour the almond flour minimum thrice so once i am sieving the almond flour i'll sieve it and only the refined part i, I will take and the refined part again i'll sieve for twice so minimum three times and in case if i'm not happy with the you know uh, coarseness of the flour i will sieve it for another maybe one or two times so at least three to five times i'll sieve my uh, almond flour to get the best result it is bit of time consuming many people prefer you know blixing it in a robocop or maybe in a mixer grinder i personally avoid doing that because what happens almond flour is a very delicate flour and it has almond essence and almond oil once we give more resistance to it uh, the essence of the flour uh, we lose on the essence of the flour and the essential oil so uh, it is always advisable to work a little harder by sieving it hand sieving it for 3 to 5 times as per your convenience and as per yeah. the desired texture of your macaron shell and then we go ahead another important thing about macaron making is egg white egg white has to be old at least one day if not two days at least one to two days old egg white that has to be kept in the room temperature and then you use it you will have a better uh, you know strength to it okay. and the magic element what we have to put is salt while we make once we start put a pinch of salt and let the froth begin in your uh, planetary mixer post that we start adding the uh, cooked sugar which when reaches at 118 degree celsius followed by the mixing of your ingredient and another important thing is once your in the entire batter is ready it should have a nice shine the way you have seen in the video and that should be easily pipeable 
and once you pipe you can maybe do one uh, small shot of piping and then you see it should settle down slightly it should not be very yeah. stiff the moment you pipe it it should not be like a lump it has to fall flat slightly but it cannot be completely flat so that's when you understand and it has to have a smooth finish on the top so once you pipe it you will have to tap your tray so that the macaroon settles down slightly all the peaks what has come during the piping that has to go flat and then you have to have a nice smooth shiny uh, shell and then you have to bake it at 160 degrees celsius again uh, always check the filament of your oven so that it is giving even heating all across your oven inside and then ensure that the time and temperature is uh, monitored while you are doing that Uh, followed by once the shells are baked do not remove it immediately let the timer be uh, on and check one shell in case if you find that the shell is sticking or in case if you find that there is it is still slightly underdone i'd recommend to uh, cook it further for maybe one or two minute depending on the texture of your macaroon what has come actually because usually what happens uh, uh in case if you follow the recipe but your oven temperature is not even or your filaments are not proper or maybe there is some technical glitch then your macaron may take little uh, longer amount of time or in case if there is more humidity in the air uh, then maybe your macaron will take slightly one or uh, one and a half minute extra uh, which you need to bake otherwise you will not get a good skirting or the base of macaron which is very 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 essential and crucial for the uh, entire uh, thing and once you get it you pull it out you have to remove it once your tray is cold uh, the carry or overcooking which happens in the macaron due to the temperature of your tray that also helps the macaron to get a nice texture and once it is uh, completely cold completely at room temperature that's when we start piping the uh, ganache and in case if you don't need the the way i have told you we need to keep the extra shells in the deep freezer and we can always reuse it in the later stage of time okay so that was a bit about the macaron part over to chef prashant <laughs> that was a very detailed and very you know it's amazing facts about uh, do uh, do's and don'ts uh, when you are making a macaron i hope uh, you know all the budding pastry chefs and people who are following us uh, on social media they are watching this and uh, i'm sure they will have their doubts cleared uh i will you know there is a uh, uh, some more time uh, left with us today i think uh, uh, our second video uh, second uh, uh video we will not be able to upload it okay uh, so uh, i will you know uh, hand it over to chef uh, prashant machado he has a few questions which has come in uh, from our uh, you know uh, students and uh, uh, faculty so over to you uh, chef machado yes good afternoon good afternoon chef vikas uh, good afternoon chef how are you fine thank you very much uh, good to connect very nice very nice demonstration what you are given uh, about the macaroons uh, because uh, always the students uh, when they are doing the bakery and pastry uh, the macaroon is a thing which they fancy more with uh, doing uh, with meringues and all so so this thing they will be uh, watching it i think again and again and doing practice as you said to be in a discipline uh, so uh, some of our uh, this thing uh, students they have some questions uh, for you one is like uh, what point should be kept in mind uh, with regard to baking the bread in the oven okay uh, that's a brilliant question i must say <coughs> uh, when we are baking any bread uh, oven is one of the most important and crucial uh, equipment which gives entire you know texture entire uh, you know body and entire element to the bread so it is like how ga gas stove is for your cooking range uh, for your uh, same thing is uh, oven what it does for uh, baking oven is one of the most important part of equipment which you know gives heat it gives steam so your oven has to be properly set ensure that your oven is preset and in case if you are baking bread ensure that you have steam supply which is very very crucial and essential for good bread baking 
and obviously you have to take care of the proving part right from scratch from the making of dough till shaping it and to proving and to scoring and then baking it each and every element is very special and important but the final part which makes or breaks a bread is the oven the way you have treated your oven so always ensure that your oven is preheated to the required temperature and then you have to bake it so uh, basically you have to take your time temperature and when you're baking uh, it is very very crucial uh, yes thank you chef check and always ensure that your oven proper heating your elements are working so the three things which is very very important okay that means the time and the temperature uh, uh, perfection should be there uh, yes. for baking the bread and the understanding what we say about the oven that should be developed with the one so person every every oven is different so you need to understand your oven there will be some uh, hot spot there will be this when the air circulation is slightly lower which you will discover uh, over a period of time once you you know talk to your oven and you uh, pay attention so it is it is very important yes uh, thank you chef uh, one of our, another student he wants to know it is like why ice water use in certain uh, bread recipes okay uh, it's a uh, excellent yeah. i must Uh, yeah. Compliment uh, the student whoever has asked this. Ice plays an important role. You know, bakery is all about time and temperature. And when we are uh, dealing with bread dough, it plays further important role because you know the ideal temperature of a dough is from maybe 23 to 25. That's what the dough when it is ready after kneading. That's what the temperature should ideally be. And in case if we have exceeded the temperature what will happen your bread will start proving because of the heat because it has yeast in it what happens eventually the yeast will start activating and your product will rise and since the temperature is higher you will not have uh, the actual flavor of the bread rather than you will have slightly alcoholic flavor and uh, the texture of the bread will go for it so ice is used to ensure that while kneading there is resistance due to the equipment so that particular thing is taken by the ice water and it ensures that your dough temperature is at at around 23 to 25 while you are uh, uh, while your dough is getting ready and when it once it is ready so ice is very crucial and important so always we have to keep in mind that while we are doing uh, bread making we ensure that the final uh, dough temperature should not exceed 25 degrees otherwise we will have with the product right 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 uh Okay, chef. Then uh, one more is coming up. Uh, it is uh, such as what is the role of acid in puff pastry? The role of acid in puff pastry. Acid in puff pastry. Okay. okay. So when we talk about puff pastry, we all have been uh, indulging uh, with different, uh, you know, uh, dishes of puff right from the beginning of our childhood. Uh, uh, the most critical element. is juice or maybe ascorbic acid or vinegar that is added to the puff dough it actually strengthens the dough the gluten is more elastic it helps in making the gluten a little bit more elastic so your dough is more elastic and then it uh, helps in the final texture of the product uh, okay chef chef uh, then now uh, Uh, one more thing is that uh, about the chocolate thing it is like okay. uh, can we use compound chocolate for ganache compound chocolate for ganache uh, i will not recommend uh, ideally ganache and all should always be made with uh, kuvacha chocolate compound chocolate i always recommend to avoid because compound chocolate is actually not a chocolate there is a big difference between kuvacha and compound although because of the price sensitivity because of multiple factors uh, these days uh, many places we use uh, you know compound chocolate but compound is just cocoa powder and uh, vegetable fat or you know however the kuvacha has cocoa liquor and uh, your cocoa mass which is uh, the key uh, key to 
uh, any uh, uh, good chocolate so for ganache and all for any kind of uh, pastry preparation i always recommend kuva chocolate a good brand okay chef and then um, what is like uh, what will uh, happen what will happen if uh, uh, we bake the laminated pastries in a low temperature you laminate it in low temperature so laminated uh, the entire charm of laminated pastry is the rise what it gets when we bake it in the oven so in case if the oven temperature is inadequate or in case if the oven temperature is low what will happen you will not have the puff you will not have the uh, desired rise uh, of your pastry and secondly what will happen due to low temperature what will happen the fat or the butter whatever you are using that will melt and it will ooze out so you lose on the richness of your pastry as well so it's always important uh, to have proper temperature to get the desired rise or the leavening and then uh, to ensure that you retain the butter as well or the fat and in case if the temperature of your oven is not right i would highly recommend do not bake anything you should wait it maybe you put your uh, bread or your uh, pastry dough back into the freezer or into the chiller and ensure to wait till the desired temperature is uh, there chef macharo i guess i guess uh, we just lost him maybe i think th- that was the end of uh, the questions uh, you know we had uh, from our students and faculty uh, okay you know uh, i we uh, we had to upload the second uh, video on for this session which was i think uh, uh, the french baguette uh, right chef yes yeah i guess yes, yes. yeah so i guess we don't have enough time now and uh, i'm sure we will you know uh, once we receive it uh, uh we will not take uh, much of your time now uh, we will surely you know uh, upload it uh, in the coming week and uh, if possible maybe if you can join us again uh, for uh, that video it will be great but uh, definitely you know uh, and uh, but we will for the folks who are following us uh, uh, there is another session which uh, had to be done today but due to some technical issues uh, we would uh, not be able to show that uh, session which is the french baguette again a very important uh, part of bakery uh, the basic bread uh, which is the french baguette uh, so we will be showing this uh, the same video uh, and this session again may, uh, in this coming week uh, we will coordinate with chef vikas on that uh, chef vikas i hope you are okay i can come up with a time and uh, you know a quick quick session a quick session for sure. that video we can do maybe in couple of days uh, time okay done uh, uh, so on behalf of everyone here and uh, uh, my students my faculty uh, i am uh, thanking you uh, the jw marriott chef imanshu taneja who is the corporate culinary head for southeast asia uh, chef anurag nasingani who is the executive chef of uh, marriott pune and you of course chef for uh, taking your time out and making this video for us for our students for everyone to see and you know your knowledge sharing and it's been amazing experience uh, this has been uh, indeed uh, i would like to thank you chef for uh, the opportunity you know which you have given uh, us to you know showcase some small bit of our uh, knowledge and skill that we do on our day to day basis uh, we'll be happy to connect again and to share our knowledge and learning and uh, learning should never stop that's what i always believe and before i and i would like to say never skip dessert <laughs> that, that's that's a good one that's a good one you know we at uh, you know nihm believe as well we want to like you say you know training should never stop and uh, so is the college training and we believe in giving quality training to our students whoever uh, you know comes joins us and that's a part of, you know we have our professionals and friends all around the globe uh, you know helping us out uh, like you are doing it uh, we will surely connect soon maybe this uh, coming week uh, to show the next session on uh, how to make the french baguette so thank Definitely. you so thank you chef uh, vikas uh, thanks for your time 
uh, till then see you and take care thank you everyone for uh, taking out time to uh, see uh, and listen to us and chef prashant uh, stay safe and uh, happy baking thank you thank you bye bye